Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be changing the oil in the front differential on my Freelander 2. The front differential is also known as the transfer box and it requires a special oil. Okay, so this is the oil which is used in the manual gearbox. It's the 7590 manual gear oil. This fluid is for the Haldex. Now I will be covering this in, a, in another video. I'm gonna be doing a whole series of videos on the Haldex differential, taking one apart, servicing mine, and then looking at modifications to the Haldex. And as part of those video series, I will be changing the fluid with this. Now this fluid here, is for the front transfer box okay it's not the same as the fluid that's used in the rear differential the rear differential is 80 90 rather than 75 90 is all regular gear oil in the rear differential but in the front transfer box we have this special fluid here now other brands are available but the thing that you're looking for is the specification here we can see that it says Land Rover and then ATF TF0870. Okay, so that is the correct oil for the front transfer case on a Freelander 2. As I said, other brands are available. There is a Castrol equivalent which has a code BOT118 and that will also do for the front transfer case. What you shouldn't use is regular gear oil or the same oil that you're putting in the, the manual gearbox or God forbid the same fluid that you put in the Haldex. I hear so many people putting gear oil in the Haldex. Uh, it's really not a good idea actually, you need special Haldex fluid. The front transfer case is a type of gear oil, but it's a special gear oil. Okay, so um, so this is the one. This uh, this is the Ravenol one DTF one. And what I've done here is get my car up on ramps. I've removed the engine under tray. Really, really oily standard factory under tray. And I've also removed my Mantec sump guard okay which i have fitted as well as the factory one so this just gives a bit of extra protection at the front so what i'm going to do now is get underneath and point out the front transfer casing and the filler plug so looking at the underside of the engine this is the sump with the uh, engine oil drain hole this here is the transfer housing front diff which is bolted onto the, the gearbox I've got a manual gearbox but even on an automatic this will be the same as far as I'm aware now the filler plug is up there you can just see up there if I can get my phone to, to focus in that area there we go that's the filler plug there is no drain plug okay so you either need to just top up the oil or better still, try and suck out the old oil through the filler hole. I bought one of these uh, syringe things from Halfords, it's 22 pounds, it's a um, multi-purpose syringe which you can attach a bit of clear hose and hopefully suck out the old oil if there's any left in there. Now this transfer case oil has never been changed or topped up since I've owned this vehicle so whatever's in there will be the original oil that was put in in the factory 160,000 miles ago so there may not even be any left in there we shall see now I've removed the engine under tray and the sump guard from the front just so I can kind of show you this on the video. But you don't actually have to remove those because you can actually get round here 
around the back, which is a little bit easier. So we can see here, this blue hose is the famous hose elbow on the bottom of the turbo, which always splits. I've replaced mine with a silicone rated equivalent. And here we can see the filler plug for the transfer housing. It's a little bit easier getting in here at the back of the engine rather than up from underneath. So I'm going to get the socket set now, undo that, and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so I'm using a very long extension bar, or combination of extension bars, on my ratchet here to get to that filler plug there. It's a 13 millimeter socket, okay, and it was very tight. I really didn't want to undo. Um, so I sort of gave it a bit of force and it's starting to rotate now. So I'm going to undo that and I'll get a towel ready underneath because I, I'm not actually sure if oil will dribble out. The car isn't level, you see it's on ramps, um, which does mean that when I fill it, I won't be able to fill it right as full as it should be, but I will have a go at this and we'll see how we get on. Right, I'm, right, I'm just going to carefully undo that filler plug and remove it and see if any oil dribbles out. No. Okay, so luckily no oil has come out. There's the filler plug. It's not a, I don't think it's a magnetic type. It might be, it's difficult to tell. It doesn't have the uh, sort of long magnet sticking out of it like some do. Right, I'm gonna stick the syringe pipe in now and just see if I can suck out any old oil. Okay, so, I've got this syringe thing assembled. I'm gonna to try to, try and do this whilst filming with my phone in one hand. Try to stick that pipe fiddly. What I'll try to do is try to stick that down in. Stick that down in right in as far as I can get it. Right, let's see if anything gets sucked out. There we go. Slowly, slowly suck this oil out. Quite a lot of it coming out actually. This oil has been in that transfer housing, churning round and round for 160,000 miles. It's never been changed or topped up. I should have done this years ago, but it was just one of those jobs that got left, as with so many things. God, there's, there's a lot of oil coming out, much more than I thought was going to come out. That's, that syringe is full now. I don't know what capacity this is. What's that? 200, 200 millilitres. Um, I'll need to go and get the Haynes manual and check how much oil we're meant to put in. I think we just fill it until it reaches the filler plug, but I might be wrong. I'd better go and check. But there's a lot of oil coming out, so I might have to uh, remove the syringe now and empty it and then stick the hose back in and have another go. So I've got the Haynes manual out. The transfer case is almost certainly the shortest chapter in the book. It's one page long. So what have we got here? So lubricants, uh, recommended oil that says C, lubricants and fluids. Okay, so we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, capacity, 0.7 litres. That's a one litre bottle. Okay, so three quarters of that needs to go in, assuming I managed to get all of the old oil out. I'm guessing that this 0.75 litres is filled from empty. Okay, so may not be able to actually get that in. Um, we'll see though, but it does say, transfer case is intended to be filled for life. There's no requirement for routine checking or renewal of the oil. Okay, well, that's, that's a good job actually, because I haven't checked it all this time in sort of 10 years. 
Uh, it may be prudent to check the oil at a level at least once in the lifetime of the vehicle. Well, that's today's the day. That's what I'm doing. Okay, raise the vehicle up, da -da 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 -da, unscrew the filler, and add the correct specification fluid until the level reaches the bottom of the filler plug. Okay, the filler plug hole is not a fluid level hole. Ah, now, interesting. Okay, so we need to then remove 120 millilitres of fluid from the filler hole. The level should now be correct. Okay, so that's very important. Don't just fill it up to the fill hole, okay? Right, that, that'll be overfilled. So we need to, to fill it to that and then remove 120 millilitres. It's a shame, actually, because that's quite a lot of new fluid to be removing and uh, throwing away, really. You can't add it back to the bottle because it will have contamination from the old oil uh, in it, so it will have to just be thrown, unfortunately. So, refit the filler plug. Okay, so, okay, we know how much to put in now. Let's have a quick look now at the lubricants section. Well, lubricants. Okay. So, we have got their transfer case. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it is the BOT118, Castrol BOT118, but that is the Castrol standard. Other standards exist that are the same, okay? So you can buy the Castrol oil if you want. I bought the Ravenol oil, um, which has slightly different codes, but it is still compatible, okay? So this fluid is, is suitable. If you actually look on the Ravenol site, it does actually list this as compatible with the Freelander 2 transfer case. Okay, so, um, right, we know the oil, we know how much. I just need to get the rest of the oil out using this and then put in as much oil as I can and withdraw 120 millilitres. Right. Here comes the next load of oil. Is it me or is that oil blacker and dirtier than the other oil I pulled out? I don't know. Now that is another, another full syringe. So this syringe is a 200 milliliter and it's meant to be 750 millilitres in the transfer casing. I don't think I'll still have 750 millilitres in there. In fact, that syringe is actually sucking air now. So that looks like 400 millilitres have been pulled out. So what I'll do is I'll empty this and I'll have one more go to see if there's any dregs in the bottom of the housing. and then I will put in the new fluid. Okay, so that's all of the old oil removed, or as much as I can possibly get out of that transfer casing. About 400 millilitres came out. I'm not sure if that's a good amount or not. Obviously it should be more than that, but in 160,000 miles, it's quite likely that some has leaked out of the seals and evaporated off or whatever it does. So 400 millilitres is actually more than I was expecting to get out of there. So um, I'm now going to open up the new oil and see how I can get that in there. I might have to use the syringe to pump the oil, oil in. We'll see. I don't know if the bottle has a, uh, has a spout on it or not. Let's have a look now and see. Okay, so the bottle has got this kind of large tube and then this cap unscrews. Uh, and then it's got some other tube in here, which, yeah, that comes up. Okay, so it does have a tube. I wonder if I 
I can get that bottle in like that. Squeeze the bottle. This could get really messy. If it's going to make a big mess, then I'll just pour this into the, uh, I'll actually undo this cap here and pour some into the syringe and put it in that way. I need to use the syringe to pull out 120 millilitres. So, um, so it may actually make sense to use that to put the oil in, but um, yeah, I'll give it a go like this and we'll see. We'll see how I get on. I'll see how I get on. Right, let's give this a go. I just know that this oil is going to pour out onto me. in there. This oil is going in. I've got to keep a close eye on that filler hole because as soon as it starts to dribble out I'm going to have to put my phone down and grab the towel otherwise I'm going to get oil all over me. getting pretty full now so I'm just gonna stop filming for a moment until I can make sure that that oil is full right to the brim. So I've noticed on the bottle there is a volume marking so you can see where the oil is there. It was a one litre bottle so 600 will be where it was so pulls 400 cc's or 400 millilitres out. We need to put in 750, so I need to take this down to 250. But that is a fill from empty volume. There will have been a bit of oil left in the bottom of the transfer case, so I'm expecting it to go down to probably about 400 to 300 millilitres. So I've still got quite a way to go. I'll put the towel around the filler hole. I'll try and get this bottle in there. It is very difficult getting in here. So what I've decided to do is take this apart, clean it out, see if we can get that opened up. It's just a little bit difficult getting in to fill the new oil back up using the bottle, even though it's got a spout on it. It's just, uh, the bottle is a bit big and um, I've got to get it into position but then I uh, can't actually really seem to kind of squeeze any oil out of it. A little bit was coming out, but I've got to put lots in. So this has still got dregs of the old oil in there. So I'm going to give that a bit of a clean out. Don't really want to be putting grotty old oil back in. I know there will still be some of it left in the housing, but the less of that that goes back in, the better. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to fill that up then with nice new clean oil, fill it right up to 200 because the uh, the bottle of oil is uh, only about 100 millilitres has gone in so there's definitely another 300 to go and hopefully more than that. So I'll fill this up, I'll just pour in, using the bottle just pour it straight in and then push the syringe plunger here to, to actually squeeze that carefully in using the uh, the narrow hose a little bit uh, easier easier to see what's going on 
Okay, so I can't get the, uh, the, the cap off this bottle, so I'm just going to squeeze in. Let's just fill it right up. We know it's a 200 milliliter syringe. Please don't tip over. That'll do for the first load. So there we go, that's full of oil. Now, luckily this syringe comes with a, a cap that you can put on the end of the hose, very useful there to stop the oil leaking out as you're filling it up. That is 200 millilitres of new clean oil. And I'm gonna get underneath now and squirt that into the transfer housing. I expect we'll need another one of those or possibly two. See how we get on. Okay, so got my little magnetic LED light here stuck on the prop shaft. Very, very useful. We can clearly see now the filler hole. And we get the syringe full of fluid and hands free. I'm going to have to pull this cap off the end. Right. Fluid's going in. Nice and slow. Okay, so something a little strange is happening. I'm filling this and it's dribbling out already. I've only put in about 150 millilitres. So I'm guessing that it's just taking a long time to drain down inside. If you fill it too quickly, it comes back out the filler. See there, it's coming back out. Making a right mess. Getting all over me and all over the ground on the bottom of the car. Oh god. Oh no. Just got a face full of oil. Come on. Oh. Okay, so I've managed to get about 700 millilitres in. The syringe is pretty empty. Oil is dripping off here, making a right mess. Um, I think it's full. I was just expecting more to go in, really. It must have been a 50 millilitres left in the housing, which I didn't get out when I sucked the old oil out. So what I'm going to do now is withdraw 120 millilitres. Okay, so I'll use the syringe for that um, and pull out that 120 and then that's it. Job done. This has been quite a messy job. The problem is you lie under the car here and if the oil dribbles out, it just comes out through all these little holes, comes out here down here off this pipe we've even got oil coming here on the suspension I mean it's just gone everywhere absolutely everywhere I think it's just it's hit this the other side of this panel and it's just spread out 
and it just it was it was just dripping it was going all over me luckily i managed to get this towel in and try and catch whatever was dripping out but um anyway it's in there now and it's full and i've just loosely screwed the filler cap in just to kind of stop any more leakage whilst i'm lying under here so okay 120 millilitres coming back out okay right i've got oil dripping all over me here it's a good job i've got my best jeans and new t-shirt on right you can see that there's even oil up on the turbocharger i mean how has it got up there it must have flicked up there as i pulled the hose out anyway there's just oil everywhere but luckily most of it has gone into the transfer housing so i'm now gonna try and prop my phone while i Now, some of you are probably wondering why I'm not using a tripod. I do have a tripod, but it's too big to fit underneath the car. So I need to try and get one of those little mini, tiny tripods so that you can put a phone on. But I still don't reckon it will be much use under here because there's nothing to really stand it on. I'm resorting to holding the phone in one hand. So I apologise if it's all a bit shaky. I'm going to get that fill plug back out now, so I can get the syringe in there. Yeah, oil is still pouring out of there, so it's definitely full. Definitely full. Stuck that hose in, it doesn't have to be right into the bottom. And I'm going to withdraw 120. Let's find the scale here. There we go. Nice new clean fluid coming out, which is an awful waste, but can't tip it back in the bottle. It's not quite as clear as the new fluid. Right, where are we? 100. got to remember that my car is on ramps as well it's not level so the fluid will be tipping backwards and it will be reading higher than it is okay so um, yeah so I need to be a bit careful here because if I pull out 120 when it levels back out it might be slightly low so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out 110 instead of 120 just to compensate for the fact that the car is sitting with the front end up in the air. Right. Okay, that's 110. All right. I don't know if that will be correct, but I remember when I did my rear diff video, somebody said, oh, it's on ramps, it won't be level. The fluid level won't be right. So, um, right, okay, so. Okay, and now I'm going to put the plug back in. Now, I was just looking at this, wondering where the copper washer is. The copper washer is actually still sat here on the housing. So I'm going to, I'm going to reuse that. I know you shouldn't, but uh, just make sure this is clean. Oh, 
this is the first time ever that it's been removed so I'm sure the copper washer has got a bit of life left in it yeah extension bar on that. Now, there will be a torque rating for this. As far as I know, the housing is made of aluminium, so don't over tighten it. Right, now, I'm not going to use a torque wrench on this. There will be a torque figure. It'll be in the Haynes manual. I'll put it up at the bottom of the screen. Is this torch stop working? Come on. The housing is aluminium, so a low torque figure. Uh, I'm just going to tighten mine by hand. Okay. Right, that's that. Take out the oily rags. After 160,000 miles, my car now has nice, clean, new transfer housing oil. I hope that video was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.